we're going to look at some economy input output models. And we'll be looking at these throughout this chapter just because this is one of the places that they fit so well. But what we're talking about is a simple economy where we have some output of like steel and we have transportation and we have coal and of course we have consumers. We have people who are purchasing this stuff. And so some of our output costs require input from the other pieces, but we also have to feed out to our consumers. And so the coal comes back up here, and sometimes they loop on themselves too. And so this is a very simple economy model, and we can create a system of equations by looking at each node and looking at all the outputs from it, and that will tell us what our output equations have to be. So the output of steel is equal to some amount from here, and some amount here, and some going here, and some going here. And this was all pioneered by a fellow named Wasley Leontief. So these are sometimes called Leontief input-output models. And all we're going to talk about today is how we set them up, and then we'll verify a solution. So here's our system. It's a very simple system using steel, transportation, and coal, and consumers. And we can see these output arrows. And so we see all the arrows coming in and out. And so what we want to do is we want to set up a system of equations where we're going to start with S. Steel output is equal to, if it's sum to itself, 0.01S. It's going to feed sum to T, so plus 0.1T. Sum to coal, plus 0.1C, plus 13.05. And this is in millions of dollars that we're talking about. So this is how much output comes from our steel. Well, our coal, again, we just follow the output arrows, is 0 0.02c 0 plus 0.2s plus 0.01t plus 6.72. Our transportation, again, we're just looking at our output arrows, so t is equal to 0 0.25s plus 0.3c plus 1.25. Notice this one doesn't feed back on itself at all. And that's OK. Sometimes they don't. They don't have any costs that are dependent on themselves. So we now have this system, but we don't like that system. We'd like it to be in an SCT format. So what we'll do is we'll subtract over, and if we subtract over a 0.01, that gives us 0.99s minus 0.1c minus 0.1t is equal to 13.05. Do the same thing with our C row. We get minus 0.2s minus 0.98c. Minus 0.01t equals 6.72. And our last one is minus 0.025s minus 0.3c plus t equals 1.25. So we have successfully created a system of equations. Now just to go back to the Leontief model for a moment. When he did this, he originally came up with 50 equations and 50 variables, and that was too big, or sorry, 500 equations and 500 variables, which was too big to solve, and so he had to combine a lot of these down to 42 and 42 so he could do it in a computer and get some solutions. And so this is a very simple model where we only have the three and then the, the one output, the consumers being our primary consumption of the material. Well, if you remember, there was a second part to this question. This said that if S is 15 and C is 10 and T is 8, will this meet both the inter-industry demand as well as the consumer demand? So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in 15 for S. So S equals 15. C equals 10 and T equals 8 and see if that comes out with any true equations. So we're going to get 0 0.99 times 15 minus 0 0.1 times 10 minus 0 0.1 
times 8, and we're going to see if that equals 13.05. So we're going to get out our calculator. 0 0.99 times 15 minus 0 0.1 times 10 minus 0 0.1 times 8. 13.05. So this one checks out. But what about minus 0 0.2 times 15 minus 0 0.98, that should be a plus, not a minus, plus 0 0.8 times 10 minus 0 0.01 times 8. Does that equal 6.72? So we get our calculator back out. 0.2 plus or minus times 15 plus 0.98 times 10 minus 0.01 times 8 equals 6.72. So that one also checks out. Our last one, minus 0 0.25 times 15 plus, nope, minus 0 0.3 times 10 plus 8, does that equal 1.25? So 0 0.25 plus or minus times 15 minus 0 0.3 times 10 plus 8, sure enough, 1.25. So this does in fact satisfy the model.